Hello, in this video I want to talk about how you can drive small servo motors used in model aeroplanes. Um, first of all, let me just talk you through the hardware that we've got. What I've got here is I've got an Eblox PIC Micro microcontroller board. On port A, I've got a um, single potentiometer on bit zero. Uh, and I'm going to use that to get a value inside a program so we can control our servo. I've got a simple LCD display, I've got a splitter board, and I've got an actuators panel with servo, DC and stepper motors, and I'm also uh, driving a small logic analyzer so we can see the signals that the program produces. And this is my servo motor here, and if I show you the program, basically I'm getting in a value on the potentiometer, you can see the value on the display, it's going from 0 to 255 and you can see the servo motor arm is moving as I increase the uh, value on the potentiometer. And servos are fantastic because they give you the ability to turn rotational motion into linear motion. So for example, if this was a, a flap on a model airplane, um, a little wire inside this white plastic arm would be able to control the uh, angle of the flap. So servo motors are fantastic little tools for uh, modeling and other applications. Let me just show you how the program works. Um, this is our panel. I've got the LCD display, a servo motor and a servo controller. Now often you want to have more than one um, servo motor and in this case you can have up to uh, eight different servo, servo motors controlled by this uh, servo motor component but we've just got the, the one. Um, so the servo motor is connected to uh, port C bit zero. The potentiometer is connected to port A uh, bit zero and the LCD is on port B. Uh, the program is fairly straightforward. We start the LCD, print servo motor test, wait for a second, um, initialize and enable the servo. Then we go into an endless loop here. Uh, we clear the LCD, we, from the potentiometer, we get the potentiometer value and we put it into a variable called servo position. Um, we position the cursor, so it's top left on the LCD. We print on the, on the LCD the value of servo position and then there's a set position macro, um, which we use then to set the actual position of the servo to the equivalent value from the potentiometer. We wait 500 milliseconds and then go around that loop. So it's fairly straightforward. Um, you can simulate that as well if you want. Um, so you can see how the um, value is put onto the LCD display, how the servo motor moves, and you can see the angle on the controller. So it all simulates quite nicely. Let's look at how it works from a signal perspective. Um, and if we just bring up the logic analyzer, and let's make that just a little bigger so we can still see the servo arm. Um, if I now at the moment our value is 255 and let's just look at that for a second and capture that signal. So at a value of 255 we've got one millisecond uh, in about 20 milliseconds. So it's a minimal pulse which moves the arm um, clockwise as you can see there to its maximum and if we then adjust the potentiometer so that it's at minimum, the value of servo position is now zero. Uh, and look again, what we've got is we've got a pulse of around two and a half milliseconds in around 20 milliseconds. Now these servos are inexpensive. In theory, the pulse should be between one and two milliseconds to give a full 180 degree uh, movement. But in this case, I'm going between naught uh, sorry, one millisecond and two milliseconds, and I'm only getting about 120 degrees. So the actual performance of these servos uh, it varies because they're quite low cost devices. Okay, hopefully that tells you how servos work. There's a lot more information on the internet that you can look up if you're curious, um, but that's all for now. Thank you.